I love to answer real questions from real people with real problems, and that's what I'll be doing in this video. If you would like me to answer your own question, please just submit it to support at rickolderman.com, and I'll see if I can get to it as fast as I can. Also, just to let you know, uh, I have a new book coming out in the fall of 2024 called Pain Patterns, Why You're Having Pain and How to Stop It. And if you would like to be notified of when that book is, is released, uh, just mention that in that email as well. Okay, this question is from Gwen. And Gwen asks, I have residual wrist and forearm pain from a wrist sprain after four months. I did wrist physical therapy with exercises I found online, but my wrist and forearm are still vulnerable to pain. So I started doing biceps curls with two pound weights. This seems to help the most by strengthening the whole arm and not just the wrist. Your thoughts? Well, my, my first question, Gwen, would be what caused the wrist and forearm sprain? Um, was it from a fall? Um, if it was a traumatic event, understand that there are many small bones in the wrist and many ligaments uh, that attach those bones together that could have gotten torn uh, if this was a traumatic accident. And so it doesn't look like you've seen a doctor or a physical therapist for this. <laughs> and you've just been looking online for things. And so this may be why you have chronic wrist issues is because you haven't sought appropriate medical attention for it. So my recommendation, especially after four months of still having pain, is that uh, maybe you go see a doctor and start with an x-ray to see if you've had a small fracture uh, or um, a ligament tear in the wrist that is preventing this from healing correctly. Um, they will then recommend you know, physical therapy or whatever based on uh, those images. So that, that would be my first recommendation. You know, the hand and wrist is a pretty important area and you don't wanna mess around with that. Um, so that's my first recommendation. All right, so one of the next things, um, I'll take you through a little test here that I do with a lot of patients. And basically uh, what we do is, what I, what I have patients do is I have them rest their arms by their sides here. And then with their th thumbs uh, pointed to the ceiling. And I just want you to notice that my forearms are resting very lightly against my shirt here, all right? And so what I ask people to do is rotate their palms up and notice the range of motion. Now, when you did that, do you notice that one palm doesn't rotate up as much as the other, for instance, maybe like this? Or if you notice that they both rotate up at the same degree, did that elbow come in closer to your waist? If it did, that means that you're compensating for a tight form rotator muscle. So that would be my first test. And then what you do is you bring it back to center again, and then you rotate your palms down. Again, is one forearm not rotating as much as the other? Or uh, if, you, if it is, does the elbow move out to help it rotate down further? Or do you find yourself just working harder to make one of the forearm, one of the hands rotate up or down the same as the other one? So this is one of the most commonly missed, I've found, uh, problems with forearm, wrist, issues is that no one is really addressing the, the deep forearm pronators. So here's an image of the deep forearm pronators. You have supinators and you have pronators and often these muscles will go into spasm and this often leads to chronic tennis elbow, golfer's elbow and chronic wrist pain because uh, most of our work involves a necessity to rotate the forearms fully in both directions. And when you have one or both of these rotator muscles uh, that are too tight, then this starts to create strain and uh, tension in these areas causing chronic pain. So um, the biceps curls, while you know two pounds, I'm glad that that's helping. What that's, it's not really, uh, two pounds is not much of a strengthening because I, most people, when they do biceps curls, they're not curling their wrist like this. Maybe you are, I'm not clear on that, but I'm gonna guess that you're doing biceps curls like this. And so uh, the biceps muscle 
there's, there's a couple. Uh, there's a biceps muscle and there's a brachialis muscle deep to that that crosses here. And I found that the brachialis muscle often becomes very irritated and then that causes the form pronators and supinators to go into spasm too. And that may be what you're affecting that, that system when you're doing biceps curls is that you are lengthening and shortening uh, slowly and with light load to coax out better movement out of the biceps or, bri or brachialis and um, the, therefore also the rotator uh, muscles too. So if you found that your form rotation is limited or you have to work harder uh, to achieve that, it's really simple to start working on that. I'm gonna take a break here to ask you to please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when future videos come out. Thank you. You would just simply put your arm on a table or something like that. Let's say this motion is restricted, the palm up motion, which is called supination. So what you would do is you would uh, place your arm on a table with palm up, and then with your other hand, what you would do is rotate that forearm even further, and you'll feel a light stretch in your forearm muscles here, all right? And I would hold that for 30 or 60 seconds, and then bring it back, and then do it once more for 30 or 60 seconds. And then uh, if the other direction is also restricted, then I would do the same stretch to the opposite direction. So you don't typically want the elbow to be in the air like this, because if it, you'll see what I just did. When you turn it down, the elbow will go out and you try and stretch it, and then you're gonna jam your shoulder and your elbows taking up all that rotation. You won't really get a stretch. So you want something, you want it on a firm surface to create that, that uh, foundation from which to stretch from, all right? It could even be your thigh when you're sitting down. So work on those two, and I would do that a few times a day for the next two or three days, and notice whether your wrist pain decreases as a result of stretching your forearm rotators. Most practitioners, and well, you're not even seeing a practitioner, you're just looking at online stuff. Uh, most practitioners don't address forearm rotators for elbow or wrist issues. And uh, so the next question is, again, if you're sure that you do not have a, li a ligament tear or bone fracture in that wrist, then you, if you haven't begun any gentle wrist flexion or extension stretching like this, that may be something also uh, worth pursuing. And then uh, lastly, if, you, if, if my arm is again resting on a table here and you have maybe a one or two pound plate here, you can do wrist curls like this, rolling the weights down in your fingertips and then rolling them back up to start so, some gentle forearm strengthening. And then you can do the same in this direction. And then you can also do it from the side. So that would be some gentle strengthening that you could try too. I'm nervous, uh, Gwen, to even give you this recommendation or advice because you've never seen a medical provider regarding this. And the wrist is, can just be fraught with problems. So I, I can't emphasize enough how strongly I recommend that you see a medical provider to make sure that you do not have structural damage that you've done to your wrist, which, you know, and if you have that structural damage, you could just be wasting all of your time listening to me because you need to get that repaired or addressed in some way. So um, anyway, that would be my recommendation. Any of you who have questions you would like to submit to me, please do so at support at rickolderman.com. If you want to be notified when my Pain Patterns book comes out this fall of 2024, then feel free to um, mention that in email and we'll let you know.